We are in the Roadshow Kitchen this morning to discover Newport. James James Gibney is here from the British Beer Company, and we are making beef and Guinness pie. Yep. That is good. Thanks for coming in this morning. Thank you. Great to have you here. All right, first, tell us a little bit about the recipe that we're going to put together. Is this something that you guys make at the restaurant all the time? Is this something that's a traditional meal? Well, we have a, a beef and Guinness pie on our menu right now. Right. Um, that is a very typical British recipe. Um, we serve it right now as a kind of a pot pie, um, but we just opened um, a little pub in Rhode Island and that's become a pie and ale house. Okay. So all we serve down there are just pies. So this is one of our main featured pies as our top selling pie that we have on a menu right now. And a place like that at this time of year with the cold weather here, the snow on the way, this is a comfort food. This is something that you're gonna eat. This is something that's gonna fill you up and you're good for the day. And yeah, exactly. All right, let's go over the ingredients of what we have to make this. Okay, well, first we have our short crust pastry, okay. or what uh, you guys call out here a flaky pastry. Mm -hmm. um, then we call it flaky pastry. So that's Don't what, hold it against that's, us. That's what lines our, <laughs> our pie tins and everything. Because this is a, an enclosed pie, it's not a pot pie, so we're going to turn this out, it's going to be freestanding. Okay. So, um, next main ingredient is the steak or the beef. Uh, of course, you always want to have, you know, top grade beef. We always try and use certified Angus whenever we get the chance. Um, certified Angus isn't the leanest. You'll see it has got a, a lot of marbling through the meat. Marbling means flavor. It's also going to make it very tender. Right. And we use a steak cut because we're not going to cook this for a, a really long time. We just want it to simmer it in our gravy get it into the pie crust and get it into the oven. It's going to continue cooking in there and get Oh tender. my God, I can't wait till you get cooking here. So um, we'll, we put all this together. We start with the beef, add the smoky bacon. Um, obviously, we've got a mixed herbs up at the top, which is the rosemary and thyme, a little garlic. Mushrooms give a nice earthy tone. Carrots, a little sweet. Onions, uh, the green beans will be actually a little bit of veggie on the side all right. that we'll have later. Um, and then this is to finish, which is our Yorkshire gravy. Yorkshire beef gravy in the pubs, we make this when we braise our short ribs. Good. And again, at the little pile of nail house, we braise short ribs just to put them in a pie. Very nice, okay, good. All right, so we have beef and bacon in this pie. Does it get any better than this? We're gonna start putting things together in just a little bit. Back to you. Thanks, Mary. We are back in the kitchen. Chef James is here with us from the British Beer Company. What are we going to do now as we make this uh, this pie? Right. Well, as I've seen before, we had our short crust pastry or flaky pastry right. ready. So uh, once you put that together initially, um, then you want to put it back in the cooler. You want to let it chill down. Okay. So that's where we've got it right now. So we're going to start rolling our pastry right. out. And how long should we let it stay in the, um, in the refrigerator? Depending on how much you're making, uh, the recipe that uh, we've got today about 15, 20 minutes is good. So as you can see, it's, it's pretty firm. Okay. And uh, we put that together, we rolled it out and we folded it back together again. Right. This um, pastry has a lot of butter content. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's not puff pastry, but it has a similar characteristic. So um, you always want to get the layers of fat going. Cause what happens is when we bake this, that fat's going to dissipate the butter and any moisture that's in that pastry is going to make it pop. And that's what we call a proper raised crust. So okay. as this pie cooks, it's actually going to Raise up a little bit, right. yeah. So what we're going to do is we'll just flatten it out, mm -hmm. and then if I can get you to start working on this, sure. And I'll start cutting the loop for All it. Right. So you're so going to roll the base roll, of roll this. Roll this out. Yep. And do you always make them in the smaller, the smaller pie crust, uh, smaller pie pans? Yeah, we try and make them, you know, just individual. More like a personal. Right, yeah, because yeah. once this is on the plate, and you'll see, it, it's a good plate coverage, and it's a great presentation, rather than just doing a typical slice of pie. Right. Um, it's much better when you get your own, you know And how, I mean? how thin does someone, when they're making this, do you want to make? Um, you want to roll this out. I always say to the thickness of the back edge of a knife. So, okay. you know, use that as, as a rule. As of a thumb. guideline. So you're going to go a little bit thinner than that. And you might want to just twist it around and just push it out a little bit that way. Okay. And uh, we're always going to have a little overhang because right. what we don't want to do is we don't want the pastry to shrink. And that's the whole idea about chilling it because if the pastry gets too warm, when you're rolling it, you're developing the gluten in the flour. And when you develop gluten, that's what makes dough really stretchy. And okay. sometimes it can get too stretchy and you end up shrinking it. Your lid won't stick. Got it. All right. And your pie falls So apart. this is rolled out. You, you put a little butter in, in the bottom yep, of the base Yeah, I always there. use a little garlic herb butter, you know, whether it's sauteed so or it whatever. So it doesn't stick. Doesn't Perfect. stick and it also gives it a nice little All bit right, of flavor. All right, we are going to put everything together in just a little bit. Back to you. Beer company, and we are whipping up a storm in here this morning. Tell us, everybody, what we're doing right now. Okay, well, what we did, we start with the uh, meat, nice hot pan, a mm -hmm. little bit of uh, light olive oil. 
Um, nice and smoking hot, throw the beef in, get it nice and brown, throw the bacon in next, let the bacon start rendering down. And then uh, next step is to add your onions, mushrooms, and your carrots. Okay. And then our, a little pinch of our mixed herbs, our rosemary and thyme, a little bit of garlic. And then we're just going to let those just slightly colour up a little bit. We're not looking to caramelise them, we're sure. just looking to kind of almost sweat them. And then you get to do the fun part, whereas we add our stout now, and we typically use Guinness. Right. Um, you don't have to use Guinness, you could use a porter or a stout, you know, whatever you're into. Um, if you're getting into beer, beer is the, the next biggest thing now. People are cooking more with beer than wine. Right. And um, beer dinners have now overtaken wine dinners. So, you know, we always try and, obviously we're a pub, so. Incorporate beer into every. every we try to serve beer with the food. Sure. We try to cook as much as we can with you beer. You guys so. are fun. Yeah, well. <laughs> But well, well, that was the whole idea for the pie and ale house. It was, well, you know, we have other pubs where we do lots of dishes that, that are American and British. And this time around, we were like, you know what? We just want to do pies here. So we'll do pies and we'll throw beer in every pie mix. And, and that's Who it. We'll like just, have, good pie we'll just have fun with it. So if you want to go ahead, we're not going to use all of that. We right. just need probably about a quarter of that pie. Okay, all right. So we'll just pour this in. Yep, just pour it and in. And tell everybody again what this is going to do to the... Uh... Right, basically, using a porter or, or a Guinness... There you go, a little bit more. A little more, okay. Yeah, a little bit more won't hurt. Um, using a porter or a stout, you'll, it'll retain, once this pie's cooked out, it'll retain some of that kind of yeasty barley flavor of the beer, but right. you're not going to taste it and go, wow, that's, that's got beer in it. Sure. What a porter or a stout does give us, it gives us volume, it gives us color. Okay. And then as it cooks down, it also has a little sweet roasted nut flavor to it, which goes great with and, the pastry. And for anybody who, who wants to know, the alcohol is going to be cooked off anyway. Yeah, as soon as that, basically, as soon as you hit the pan, you hear that sizzle and bubble. Right. The alcohol's it, it, gone. It's gone. It's, it's gone. gone. So what we do now is we'll just, that's called deglazing. Uh -huh. So we're just going to, any meat where we seared the meat before, you want to make sure you get the bottom of the pan and get any of that flavor up. Right. This is pretty much exactly how we make this gravy when we braise the short ribs and then we use the braising liquor to start our gravy. Okay. So you'll always notice whenever you have a good gravy, if you go into any restaurant, they say oh, we have homemade gravy or whatever. Take a look in your gravy and you want to make sure that you see little kinds of flecks of meat. It's and still a piece of the meat in yeah, the Yeah, and, and you, can, you, can, you can tell this has been made properly. Right. And this pie without a proper gravy is it just isn't as good, isn't and it's certainly not as good if you don't have any beer in it. All right, for everybody out there who may not know, tell us tell us where the restaurant is. Okay, we're in Bristol, Rhode Island, obviously, on okay. State Street. Right. It's a teeny little pub. It's what we call a half pint. Sure. Um, so it sits about 40 or 50 people. You're British, you're all about the beer, aren't you? Right. <laughs> you it gets, uh, everything. <laughs> Friday, Saturday nights gets really busy, so right. I'd recommend being there early doors um, to secure your position at the bar or just to secure <laughs> your square foot. Uh, it gets pretty jam -packed. You need to rope it off. Yeah, that's right. So, um, but no, it's a, it's a great little pub. You were saying earlier about this time of the year, they're calling for snow perhaps today. Sure. So, I mean, you know, if you're out and about Bristol, take a walk down the street, maybe hit some boutique stores, right. head into the pub, sit by the fireplace, a nice pie, a nice pint. That is perfect. Good stuff. Okay, uh, we have the, the pastry that we already rolled out here. Yep, we already, I already rolled this pastry mm -hmm. out and I lined it in our tin. And as I said before, we're going to have that overhang and we want that. So when you're lining your pastry tin, just make sure you're pushing down and into it. Okay, you don't okay. want to have any air trapped in there because sure. it will start bubbling the pie up. So once this is done and we're nice and deglazed, you want to add your gravy. Okay, put that in. Oh, so you're going to mix it right in? Oh, with yeah, okay. oh, yeah. All right. So we'll mix this Look in. at that. You just have a couple of seconds left here. So then right. we're just going to take that and you'll spoon that into... Yeah, you'll spoon this right into the pie. That looks fantastic. And then how long is this going to go in the oven for? It's going to go in the oven. Uh, this is a convection oven with a fan, so 350 for about 20 minutes. But obviously, you know, all ovens are different. Right. So I would recommend Keep setting the oven. It. Yeah, set it for 10 minutes, check the pie, turn it, okay. and what have you. So right. next you'll, up. You'll put that on it, and we are going to show you the finished product in just a little bit. In the meantime, back to you.